this video, I'll walk you through how to use a simple pulse milk machine and clean it. In the morning before I head down to the barn, I get a half gallon of soapy water and a half gallon of plain water in jars together. I also bring an empty half gallon jar to put milk in and my simple pulse collection jar that's been sanitized from the last milking. This water will be used to wash and rinse the goat's udders and then to wash out my simple pulse when I'm done. Before I bring in the goats, I want to fill their feeder up. This is a special formula I buy called Milk Enhancer from the local co-op. Based on my experience, it only costs a little more than the regular goat feed and in actuality does increase the milk production of my girls. When I can, I like to mix in black oil, sunflower seeds, and oatmeal. It's not always, but I feel that it's a great treat that helps give them extra calories since their body works so hard to make the milk. As a rule, at bare minimum, even with other things mixed in, our milkers get four cups of grain twice a day. I also put in a single dosage ball of the fur metal herbals and a single clove of garlic. The dosage balls will help regulate parasite loads in the goat's digestive tract, and the garlic will help boost their natural immunity. This can also help them balance their warm load more effectively. Now to set up the simple pulse machine. I take my collection jar and twist off my blue cap. I then take my milk filter and place it inside the lid. I love that Simple Pulse will send you startup filters in a container to keep them in. Once the filter's in, replace the blue top, making sure it's on correctly so that it will form a seal. Then connect the vacuum hose to the jar on the white outlet of the lid. Now to connect the hoses attached to the milking claw. They fit pretty snugly, so you just need to make sure they're pushed on all the way to create the seal. If you notice, the wider hose from the blue, from the claw, has a blue stripe down it. This will attach to the blue lid and is the tube that the milk travels in. The thinner tube has a black stripe down it and will attach to the pulsator. And that's it. Your machine is ready to run. Now to get the goat. Next, you need to get your goat up on the stand and lock her in. We're milk sharing with the babies. This means that during the day, the babies get full access to their mom and her milk. In the evening, I tape up their teats so that babies won't have that access to her through the night. So first thing I do is I take the tape off. It doesn't hurt her. If you notice, it doesn't even seem to phase her. Then I use a paper towel to wash with the soapy water, another paper towel to rinse with clean water, and then a third paper towel to dry it. From there, I use the towel I dried her with to squeeze out a little of her milk on each side to make sure that her milk has no blood or clumps in it. If she had blood or clumps in it, it would indicate that she was having some kind of issue with her udder. Also, by washing her udder, we're stimulating it and triggering her to let down her milk. Believe it or not, a goat can hold back her milk if she really wants to. It's happened to me before. With that done, I can turn on the milker and place the claws on her teats. You want to try to keep the pressure between 10 and 12 pounds. It's adjusted by using a black knob on the front of the machine. There's only one black knob, so just keep an eye on the gauge as you twist it. If it's up too much, you can make the goat uncomfortable, or worse, you can injure her. You may have noticed how thin my girl is. I've been working on having her recover from a parasite overload, and she's definitely thinner than I'd like her to be. In order to help put weight back on her and to add nutrition, we feed her as much chaff hay as she likes while on stand. Her name is Maple, and Maple also finishes all her grain before the milking is over, so chaff hay keeps her happy until it's done. Chaff hay is actually fermented alfalfa, and it's great for their digestive system. Now it's time for me to transfer the milk. I hold up the hoses and may turn it on for a moment to get out any remaining milk from the hose. But because the milk traveled through the filter before entering the collection jar, my milk is ready to be poured into a clean storage jar that I brought down with me. So I remove the hoses, get my storage jar ready, 
open the black stopper, pour in my milk, close up the black stopper, and seal the storage jar. I'm going to hook up all the hoses so that I can clean it next. I'll use a dry erase marker to put the date on top of, the, of this milk and it will go right into the fridge. Now it's time to clean the system. I'm going to use that same soapy and clean water that I had from earlier when I washed the udders. First I turn on the machine and then I'll stick the claws into the soapy water top side down to suck it up. Push the bottom of the claw inward so that it'll open the suction without the pulsating. Then I place the claws into the clean water and do the same. Just by doing this, you've effectively washed the hoses. I then disconnect and hang up those hoses in the milk room to dry until the next milking. Okay, so the milking is done. We've got it into a jar. It's now in the refrigerator, and now we're left with just cleanup of the rest of the Simple Pulse machine. I love Simple Pulse. It really is not difficult to keep clean at all, and it's completely worth it, in my, my humble opinion. So for the jars, I use one jar every morning. I got two jars that came with my system, and they look like this, as you saw. Um, this one has already had, I've used it, it's already run through. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the filter the dirty filter from milking, throw it away. I have a bowl of warm water here. I'm gonna put the lid in it. Then this also comes off. This is the stopper for the spout. I'm gonna put that in the warm water. I'm gonna put the lid in. It has a gasket right here, take that out and put all this in the warm water. Put this to the side. And I use just a splash of bleach, just a splash. Not even a full splash, just a tiny little bit. And I will let that sit for a minute while I wash this out. Now, when I wash this out, I only wash it out with hot soapy water. Uh, you can put a little bit of bleach in it if you want, but because I washed it with kind of hot soapy water, I'll just, I think that it's, as long as the water's hot, I think you're going to be fine. So I'll go ahead and do that now. with hot soapy water which is as clean as it needs to be the plastic because it's porous has been bleached so that's as clean as it's gonna be we're gonna dry off all of it with paper towels or let them air dry and the reason is this is water carries bacteria with it I have washed a container and then used it to milk without completely drying it you know we, we do that I'm like it's water but what I forgot to realize was that water with that bacteria winds up in the milk turning makes the milk turn faster so I did an experiment and it, it proved true I just let it completely dry before you use it so that's my personal experience with that now I have my jar clean I do that every day I clean it I have another one here that needs to get cleaned for milkings the second thing that I do once a week is I clean the hoses and I'm going to show you how to do that now. I really like Simple Pulse because when they give you the machine they don't just give you the machine they give you everything you need to be successful to keep it clean to keep it running and a couple of those things are tools to clean the uh, milk claws and the hoses. All right so this I use to clean the milk claws and I'll show you what that looks like and these are to clean the hoses so I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning them now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run some water through the hoses 
Then I'm going to apply some soap to this and then run that through the hoses and I'll show you how I do the rest of it. So to begin our weekly claw cleaning, we're going to put some warm water in a bowl with a little bit of bleach. This is exactly what we did for the lid of the jar collection system. This will sanitize the claw pieces. Next, we're going to remove the claws from the hose. First thing we're going to do is unscrew the bottom rim from the claw and put that in the water. And the top rim we're going to unscrew so now the middle piece of the claw is freed up. Remove the blue plunger and also the red gasket which I failed to do here and the plastic piece that held the blue bl plunger in place. Those all go in the water to be sanitized along with the claw itself. Next we're going to remove the Y-shaped piece from the hosing. So to separate it, we're just going to pull it because there's no special connection. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease. That Y-shape is also going to be placed in the water to be sanitized along with the other claw pieces. Then we're going to run a little water through the short tubes and also place each end of the long tube in the sink, running water through one end and coming out the other. This is just to get the inside wet so that we can go ahead and wash it with soap. While I wait for the claw pieces to soak a little, I'm going to use those special brushes that Simple Pulse supplied and clean the hoses. First, I place some direct dish detergent directly on the brushes and rub it in a little bit. Then I feed the opposite end of the cable brush through the milk hose. When I get it to the end, I'm going to pull it all the way through. I usually do this two or three times. You're going to repeat this process with the short pieces of hose. Sometimes I even put both pieces on and pull it through at the same time. Okay, so now I've completely washed the inside of this with hot soapy water and I'm going to wash the other pieces so I can reattach them. You will not need to wash out the inside of these because these are just air hoses. Um, you, you're never have, going to have a contaminant like the milk or anything in it. Also, I can put these back together um, wet because they will air dry before I use them. I will let them air dry before I use them since you can't really dry the inside of it like you can the glass container or the parts. The other thing to remember is not to use bleach on these because they're a different kind of plastic. The hot soapy water will work for this. Okay, now we're ready to put everything back together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom part of the claw. There's a small part and a big part. We're going to look at the small part first. You're going to need your little gasket, not the gasket, but this little plastic piece, and your blue plunger thing. We're going to put this so that, if you notice, there's a little... <laughs> 
there's that little bump part at the top. That's going to go headed pushing towards the outside, like so. Okay, so I'll do that again. You have your little plastic piece, and it has a little, that little part at the top. The small end, we're going to put it in just so it fits just like that. You're going to take your blue plunger, hold the bottom. You're going to push it so that it goes through just like so. Okay. Looks like this at the big end. Looks like this at the small end. All right. Next, we're going to take our round red gasket. And if you notice, this also has a specific shape. Whoops. It's a little smaller on one side than it is on the other. It's important that you get it facing the right way. So actually it's more on the inside. If you notice, it's like it's thinner on one side and thicker on the other. That thinner part, the skinnier part is gonna go down so that it fits neatly. If you don't get this right, it's gonna affect the, the suction of your claw. So I hope that made sense. All right, so now it looks like this. Now we're ready to attach it to the claw, okay? Here's my claw. The spout here, we're gonna line up spouts. Hold the bottom spout, it fits right in. And just twist it on. Twist it together, that'll hold it nice and tight. Almost done. Now we take the small one and we just attach that to the bottom. If any of these are not done correctly, it will affect the suction of your claw. Ask me how I know. So I, when you don't, if you're not getting good suction, that's one of the many things you can check to see why. So that's one claw done. I'm going to go ahead and fix the other claw, and then we're going to put it back on the hoses. Okay, I have each of my individual claws assembled and ready to go back onto the tubes. So believe it or not, that was the hard part. Now for the easy part. You clean this Y piece. That's going to go back on the end of your hose that has the Y piece for the air hose. So this is your milk hose, so go in the end of the milk hose. Easy peasy. Then you take your two short pieces and attach them. It doesn't matter which end goes on. It can go this side or it can go this side. It will not matter. It'll work both ways. I like to make sure they're lined up so that when I hook them up, they're not opposing each other. You know, like if this is twisted, which it is, it's twisted a little bit too much, so it wants to go like that. So I'll just make sure it's lined up with this Y. Because these air hoses, these ones with the black stripe, are gonna go to the top, to the top ones. So we're gonna make sure they're like that. These are what give the section to the claws to make them pull together in order to milk the goat. And then these are going to go on the bottom ones. So one claw should look like that. Blue line milk hose at the bottom, the bigger hose at the bottom, the thinner hose at the top. Do that for the other side. And now it's ready to go. It's all clean and ready for your next milking. So I'll put this with my stuff. When I go down to milk in the morning, I'll bring it with me. So that's it. That's how you clean your Simple Pulse milking machine. I just want to say thank you for joining me today. I hope I helped you in some way. I know when I first got the machine, I just wrestled a little bit with, the, with it. I've never done anything like that before. But once you get going, it should be really easy to use, really easy to clean. And man, it saves a ton of work on your hands. Woo, my hands were very happy about that. So happy milking. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. Also, you can visit my website, makewithhomestead.com, if you want to learn how to get delicious tasting milk every time.